So if he says something, you need to mark that and say, Lord, you said that. If God told you today, he said, I am going to make you a millionaire. You need to shout from the rooftop. If on Monday they fire you from your job, you need to get excited. You don't need to say, oh God, you said you were going to make me a millionaire. You need to say, oh man, I'm just, who cares if I lost a job? God said he's going to make me a millionaire. <laughs> if, but see, God has to say something in order for you to be able to, to trust it and to believe it because you know if God said it, it's going to come to pass. So all you have to do is go through his word and find his promises okay understand hey lord you said this god this is what you said remind him of it let's look at this he designed the earth not in vain but to be inhabited so the earth has a purpose and the good thing is is he made us in his image to be a part of his plan let's look at this luke 18 1. now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Why? Why did he want us to pray? If God can do whatever he wants to, why, why is he saying that at all times man ought to pray? Ephesians 6.18 Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Another scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. And this one is important. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. <laughs> My God, let's go over that again. This is powerful. Remember, he is committed to his will, okay? He says here, pray without ceasing. Why? If God is sovereign, why? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? You, that is us, concerning us. So, so you, humans, you, man, mankind, you are a part of his will. Why does he need us? If God is self-governing, why? We have to understand this to understand prayer. Because otherwise, we're just saying things, thinking that if we pray enough and if we cry enough, then maybe God will say, well, okay, I'll answer that one. Uh, you, you need to beg me for three hours and then I'll... I'll answer this. God doesn't do that. You don't have to pray for three hours. You don't have to, you don't have to do a, a certain ritual a certain way. You just have to understand the principle behind prayer and the purpose of prayer so that when you ask, you don't ask amiss, okay? So ask yourself, there has to be a reason for prayer then. If God wants, if, if he t is telling us at all times you should pray, and if he is telling us, you need to pray without ceasing, for this is the will of God for you. Why? Well, let's look at this. Titus, um, uh, Titus 1-2. This is important right here. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Look at that. There it is. He cannot lie. Titus 1-2 in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. God can't lie. Get that. He cannot lie. God cannot lie. So if you ever say, well, God doesn't have to do this thing, but he said it, that is violating God's word. You're not lining up with God's word. Okay? We have to realize that. And it goes both ways. Sometimes we think, oh, well, God's not going to do this. But if he said it, he does. If we remind him of it and understand that, God, you said this and you can't lie, you have to answer this, God. But there's another part to this. It goes both ways here. Think about this. Sometimes God can't answer us because he can't hear us because we have sin in our heart. Remember, he says, if you regard iniquity in your heart, I can't hear you. 
But yet sometimes we regard that iniquity and we pray and pray and pray and we say, God, why won't you answer? Well, for one, if he answered you, it meant that he heard and was attentive unto your prayer and that would make God a lie because he said, if you regard iniquity in your heart, God, he says, I can't hear you. Another thing, you come before the altar with a gift, but you have an alt with your brother, but you stay there at that altar. Oh, God, oh, God, bless me, God, bless me with this. I need this, God. But he says that he wants you to go first and try to mend that all before he can answer that prayer, before he can accept that gift. But you stay down there week after week with your gift. Oh, God, I give you praise. I give you honor. But you have an alt against somebody. God cannot lie. He is bound by his word. And if he went ahead and answered your prayer and went ahead and accepted your gift and you have an alt, he would have lied right there. And God is not a liar. He cannot go against his word. So we have to find out what God's promises are. And then we also have to find out the things that can hinder us, our prayers from getting through to him. Let's look at this. God cannot lie. 1 Samuel 15, 29 and also, the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. Again, I am, we're just reiterating that. Hebrews 6.18. This, if these other two verses didn't tell you, this does right here. Hebrews 6.18. It is impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for God to lie. That is a powerful thing. When it said that, and remember it's God's word, we, can, we need to, to stand and say, Lord, it's impossible for you to lie. Let's remember that. So God is held to his word. If God wanted to do something totally different from what he said in his word, then God would be a liar. But God is not a liar. That's why we can trust him so much. That's why we can trust his word so much. Because he is held by his word. Look at this. Jeremiah 1. I want you to write this down. Jeremiah 1 verse 12. This is a, I took this from the uh, New American Standard Bible. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well. For I am watching over my word to perform it. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Oh, write this down. Man, I tell you, this is powerful. I'm just, I'm feeling the Spirit of God right now with this scripture. And then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching this is God. He's saying, I am watching over my word to perform it. If God is watching over his word to perform it, then we need to be asking him his word. Okay? If we can understand that principle, then we can get our prayers answered. It, I hope some of you have been reading my writings about the Lord's Prayer because it helps us to understand. This was a model prayer, a, a pattern for prayer that we need to know. The disciples had asked him, God, teach us how to, you know, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And he said, he said, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. 